When you recite the Qur'an, which tariq do you use? If you don't know what tariq is or if you're not sure whether you should recite according to one, then keep watching this important lesson for any beginner or advanced learner. The word tariq linguistically means path or way. And in terms of the study of the Qur'an, it refers to a layer or level of narrators in the Qur'an line of narration. So we have the layer of Qari'. Second layer is his student, Rawi. Third layer and all beyond are called Tariq. The most famous example is that of Hafs an Asim. So Asim is the Qari'. Hafs is the Rawi who received it from Asim. And Ubaid ibn Sabah is a tariq who received the Qur'an from Hafs. Each qira'ah, riwaya, or tariq is named after the most famous individual who recited that certain variation and then taught it to his students. So then he became famous for it and it was named after him. So for example, a qira'ah difference between Asim and Nafi' is Malik versus Malik in Al-Fatiha. The two options are correct. Asim chose Malik and Nafi' chose Malik. And this is what they taught to their students. And then within the Qira'a of Asim, we can have a riwaya difference like that between Shu'ba and Hafs. For example, how they pronounce this word. Hafs applies Tasheel and says A'jami. But Shu'ba does not apply to Seel and just pronounces full Hamza. A'ajami. Both are correct and both were passed down from Asim. But Hafs became famous for teaching it with Tasheel. And Shu'ba became famous for teaching it with full Hamza. And then within the Riwayah, we get some Tajweed differences between the Turuq. Like elongating Mad Munfasil for four counts or for two counts. يا أيها الناس يا أيها الناس So they are majorly minute tajweed differences. The most famous tariq is that of الشاطبيه and it is called الشاطبيه because it is taught using a poem made by الإمام الشاطبي and it teaches the tariq of Ubaid ibn al-Sabbah, but it is famous for being called a shatubi The important thing to know about tariq is that it is a set of tajweed rules or options that you as a learner are expected to follow. So if you follow one tariq, then it is expected that you adopt the whole package or the entire set of rules. That's why there are several guides explaining the differences between, for example, Al-Shatubiyyah and Al-Fil, showing you the set of rules that each tariq contains. So, in Al-Fil, Mad Munfasil is only elongated for two counts, but in Al-Shatubiyyah it is for four counts. The word Firq is pronounced with heavy Ra in Al-Fil, but in Al-Shatubiyyah it can be pronounced with light Ra, Firq, or with a heavy Ra, Firq. The word al-musaytirun, it is pronounced with seen in al-fil, al-musaytirun, and in al-shatubiyya, you can have it in both ways, with seen or sad. So, such differences in tajweed that you should be following through when reciting in a certain tariq. But then, what happens if you, for example, are not deliberately following a certain tariq, or in other words, you decide to apply two counts for disconnected med, as in al-fil, but then you will pronounce al-musaytirun with sad, as in al shatubiyya So you took one element from here and one element from there. Is that bad or allowed? Well, in the study of qira'at, this is called khaltu turuq, or blending of turuq. And this can happen in two situations, which then determine whether or not it is allowed. First, if you are reciting to your shaykh to receive an ijazah, or you are reciting with reference to the chain of narration, 
it would then be considered as lying if you would blend طرق. For example, in this ayah, if we took from طريق الفيل two counts for disconnected med in these positions, but then we took from شاطبية that we pronounce ra here as a light ra, which is not an option for الفيل. We would be blending both طرق. So if we recited this ayah like this and said, this ayah was recited through Ahmad ibn Humayd al-Fil, through Amr ibn al-Sabbah, through Hafs, through Asim. It would then be considered a lie, because this combination of Tajweed rules, as we pointed out, was never reported through this chain of narration. These choices were not made through this tariq. Also, if you are trying to get an ijazah while reciting this ayah with this combination, it won't be given to you for the same reason. This was not reported like this, so you won't fit in this chain of narration. However, the second situation, if you are just a casual reciter, who's just trying to recite the Qur'an correctly, which I assume the majority of people watching this lesson are, then it cannot be considered haram, prohibited or anything to recite using two different turuq in the same recitation. So, reciting فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنِ اضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالطَّوْدِ الْعَظِيمِ It is 100% correct Qur'an without a doubt. The reason is that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did, without a doubt, recite the med here as elongated and not elongated. And he did recite it here with heavy and light ra. So you have recited every word correctly like the Prophet, peace be upon him, did. So there should be no problem whatsoever if you recite it like this when avoiding the first situation as we pointed out. For a more detailed look on that matter, Check the description for the fatwas and quotes of Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn al-Jazari, and al-Hafidh ibn Hajar. So while it is indeed better to follow the standard, Allah says in the Qur'an, فَقَرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنْهِ Recite what is easy from it, as long as you recite correctly and recite consistently. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Qur'an in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.